Everyone, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Kimberly Knox and you're in KK's Fit Kitchen. We are gonna continue with the creative aspect of cooking. Uh, I'm the creator of the bioenergetic cooking method, which really looks at food and its influence on the body, delves into what food is medicine really means. And today we're kind of, we, we talk about the seasonal health in the book. We're going to be leaning from summer into late summer health today with this meal because the summer rules the heart and the small intestine. And we're taking a recipe from section two, which is one of the heart sections. But the late summer leads into more earth. And this is where we're nourishing for completion. And that would be the fall, which is harvest time. We're bringing something to harvest. So we're nourishing the body in a different way. We need more warming foods. So um, you guys know that I keep uh, this bowl of inspiration out. You should always have, you know, something out to inspire you, whether it be, I'm actually out of uh, <laughs> apples and lemons right now, but on your counter. So I keep my sweet potatoes, my onions, my squashes in that bowl. We're going to be using an acorn squash today. This makes the most lovely full plate, full plant-based meal. And that's actually what we're making today. You can, you can actually put some ground um, organic turkey, organic lamb or bison into the recipe, but going plant-based just allows the body or incorporating some plant-based allows the body to not use so much energy in the digestion and to make sure that food is properly digesting because meat requires, a, you know, an amount of digestive acid and enzymes that some people just don't have and as we age, we lose. So this is an acorn squash. We're gonna cut this baby open. We're gonna roast it and we're gonna stuff it. So the recipe that I'm doing is in section two. It's a stuffed acorn squash with quinoa. Now I'm going to show you how you can change this up. Let's say you get inspired by this recipe, but you don't have everything like I don't today. All right. Um, so in every one of my recipes, I talk about the nutrient quality. And when you get one of my cookbooks, you also get the full healing glossary. The cookbooks are all signed and you can also get your free um, edition right now on Kimble, Kindle Unlimited or you can get a Kindle version for uh, about a quarter of the price of the full color book, okay? So acorn squash, it's diff it's very delicious, filled with potassium, which we really need. And why is it in this section of the heart? Because in this section of the heart, I talk about some of the, um, the uh, nutrients, the minerals that are required for relaxation, potassium, magnesium, and lycopene. So we're talking about that aspect of the heart and section four talks more about the oxygen transport of the circulatory and heart system. Okay, so um, just it, here's just a little side note. One cup of mashed acorn offers nearly 20% of your daily value of potassium. That's huge. And quinoa, great source of your daily value of magnesium. Fats, fiber, protein. That's what keeps your blood sugar stable, keeps you from getting hangry, right? When people are hangry, it's because their bodies are operating off glucose. They are sugar addictive. And, you know, anytime, oh, sorry, we do need this. <laughs> I'm going to go through what we're changing here. Um, actually, I don't really need it. So um, the, the, okay. So we are getting off the sugar by adding in just nutrient dense food. And when you focus on fats, fiber and protein, and that's what I talk about in my smoothie demonstrations, an easy way to do that without being a chef. So we've got a skillet, it's heating up here. And we thought uh, that we're gonna be putting um, the broth in. So you can make it fully plant-based just by having a veggie broth. I'm okay with having a, a chicken broth. So that's what I'm putting in. I'm going to go through what I don't have. I do not have green apples, but I do have pears. And these were in one of the other chicken recipes. I have two of them left. So I'm going to use those in, in this recipe. It's not going to change it. Um, I also have some mushrooms. Mushrooms are not called for in the recipe, but I'm going to add them in. Because really what we're doing is we're sauteing up some uh, veggies 
not cooking them too much because we're going to finish baking it. I already have some chopped onions from other recipes. That's why it's good to have them pre-prepared. I just did my juicing of celery and I saved out some of the, the smaller inner sections of the celery. Those are great for snacks or for cooking with. Um, for my scallop recipe that I just videotaped, I had a few of these sweet potatoes left. So I just cut them into quarters. We've got garlic. We've got fresh parsley. And I even have green onions because I tend to like green onions. So you don't have to add those in. Um, I also have these adorable um, sprouted black lentils, right? So I talk about sprouted lentils in section three of the book. I tell you how to do it. But in some of my videos, I have mentioned it. I'm going to add that into the quinoa when it's cooking, because uh, I'm going to add it when, when lentils sprout, they perfect their protein profile, which is the amino acids that we need. So that's fantastic. We're going to cut this open and the, and the uh, herbs. Now you can use powdered sage. I happen to have some fresh sage. I have fresh thyme. The recipe doesn't call for that, but um, I also have powdered rosemary. Normally I would like to use fresh rosemary but you can use powder if that's all you have. And then we're using some of the um, apple juice sweetened cranberries. They're from Aurora brand, delicious. So what we want is we wanna sweeten up that squash and give your kids like a reason to go, ooh, a pear. You know, give a little pop of natural sweet because that's what the spleen wants, natural sweet. The oven just beeped, it is at 400. We're gonna be roasting this baby. So let me clear out a space. We're going to cut this. I'm going to get my apron on and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Um, we're going to get the quinoa going. So I'm using the True Roots brand sprouted quinoa. Why is sprouted better for your sensitive digestive systems? Almost everyone has uh, that these days but even it's fluffier. So I prefer the Sprouted True Roots brand. Um, this is just a classic, it's not the tri-color. But first we're gonna boil, it's about a two to one conversion and um, let me just grab a pot holder. Two to one conversion of fluid. <laughs> Starting one here. That's gonna boil quite quickly. What I do add to the water, um, I'll just add, uh, the chopped up garlic clove. So we'll get that going. Then as soon as that's boiling, we'll add that in. So let's get the squash in the oven. So what you can do uh, to meal prep, obviously I'm gonna have two. So I'm gonna have two meals out of this. You can also make more quinoa because quinoa keeps excellent in the refrigerator. You can also freeze it. So then you have some. You wanna use a sharp, thin blade knife to cut your acorn squash. It's got grooves, so try to get down into um, the grooves. And the, and the Sentuco knife, you can use the tip uh, of the knife to get through and then just crack it here, all right? To scoop it out, uh, I've always just used a knife, a spoon. We used to have really sharp edged spoons growing up where we could scoop out, but see how this works pretty easily. So we'll just get this scooped out. We put it into this bowl, ah. refuge. And then uh, I'm going to go get the, I always line parchment paper on the pan. Of course, it helps with cleaning as well. And then I'm going to cover. So we're going to rub them down with coconut oil and get them on the pan. And then add a little salt and pepper. Let me go grab the pan and the parchment paper and we'll be right back here. So I love these having small half sheets. They're perfect if you just wanna do a small amount of cookies. If you check out my million dollar chocolate chip cookie recipe, keep big chunks frozen in the freezer. And then you just cook a small amount when you need them. That way they're always fresh, warm, gooey, and tasty. And you don't just have a bunch of them laying around that you're gonna eat. That's one cookie that I like to cook fresh. The other ones I do cook them and I keep them in the freezer. Uh, keeps them fresh and then they're not in sight and they're not getting stale. So you can, if you want this to uh, sit flat, just give this a little cut on the bottom, see? 
So now it's just gonna lay flat and not rock around, which is perfect. And we're going to grease it up with some coconut oil here. This is really my oil of choice when I am roasting squashes because it's got a very high smoke point. Gives it a little natural sweetness. It's not going to taste like coconuts. <laughs> and that's perfect. We'll use more of this. I'm actually going to cook up. I'm going to cook the veggies in that. When we're talking about fats, fiber, and protein, this is an energy type of fat. So the medium chain uh, triglycer triglycerides actually convert, help the body convert to an energy source when you're cutting back on glucose. So a little salt, a little bit of pepper. What is this one? There's lots of different peppers. So get creative with your pepper, your pepper connoisseur. We're gonna cover it with just a little bit more of the parchment paper. And then I'm gonna put, just to create a little seam to help it cook a little quicker, that the oven's at at least 400. If your oven's a little bit uh, lower temp, Jack it up a little bit more. I just want to partially cook this. So we need to cook it for at least a half hour. All right, so we're going to get this in the oven. Then we're going to start the filling. This is already boiling. Okay. So we're just going to add the half cup of the quinoa here. Can I do this? That's filling everywhere. Okay. About half a cup. Get this in. We're going to turn it down a bit and give it a stir. And then this will be fluffy and delicious in no time. Like I said, if you want to cook extra, do. That way you have quinoa for other things, side items. You can add different veggies to it. Okay, so we've got this heating up now. Um, <clears throat> so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna saute, <clears throat> we're gonna saute the onions up. The recipe for some reason doesn't have garlic in it, but add garlic, I like garlic. So if you like garlic, add a couple cloves of garlic and, uh, <clears throat> like I said, we're gonna uh, we're gonna start with some coconut oil to saute the onions in. I like keeping out one of these small pastry brushes. I use it uh, if you're cooking a lot. You're gonna use it a lot. So let's get these in, and we're gonna use the same. It's from Valentine's Day, <laughs> the same little rubber spatula. So these are the copper core all clad professional pans. You know what? Good pans last forever. These with the copper core, you're going to pay, get them when they're on sale or negotiate a sale price. They're just awesome to have. You'll you know, you just do really great using them. So I'm just going to give these a slice and then I'm going to use my chef knife to chop up the garlic. Okay. Uh, I like it rough chopped. <laughs> so you basically just keep putting it in piles and then chop through it. It doesn't have to be perfect technique. Like I said, just don't chop up your fingers, but these chef knives are great because they are they have a curve, which allows you to rock a little bit in your chopping. The more you do it, the better you get. Excellence is just a factor of keeping doing something, okay? So we're letting those, um, let's get a tiny bit translucent here. And fragrance, <laughs> the house smells so good. Oh, I wanted to get some of these little little babies into, uh, into the quinoa, cook these up. I like them better cooked than raw. You can, you can put them raw into salads though. So that's 
picking up nice and put that on low. I keep so that's why I have lots of these jars around <clears throat> they're perfect for storage. Okay, so the celery, you want to get the celery chopped up as well. I like to just and stack the stalks, take your nice slim blade and just cut slowly through them all. So just watch your fingers, you tuck them under a little bit. Sometimes you're not gonna be able to fully Don't get nervous. This is just about a rhythm and just try to get them around the same size so they cook uniformly. That's it. Very easy. Okay, so this uh, recipe is going to have a little bit of a fall flair because of the rosemary and the sage. It's going to kind of remind you. We can even add like a little bit of broth in there so we don't have to rely so much on the uh, on the oil to cook this. Let's get the garlic in there. All these are going to get fragrant. In another few minutes, um, I'm going to add the spices. The sweet potatoes are done on a mandolin, so I'm adding those up. That is just something extra that I had in my refrigerator that I wanted to use. So these are shiitake mushrooms. You can grind these up so small. If your family doesn't like them, then you can just add them. You'll be able to get the extra B vitamins and their some really amazing plant compounds in mushrooms. So <clears throat> you can get those benefits without somebody knowing that they're in there. Shiitake are a little bit more mild in my opinion. Okay, have fun. When I'm not doing a video and I'm cooking, I generally watch like, or I listen to great music or I watch a really nice documentary right, cooking on my computer. So just make cooking fun for you. So I'm gonna add like a tiny bit of broth into the base here. You just give it a little bit of steam because I'm gonna cover this too to help uh, the steam <clears throat> soften things without overcooking. Okay, so let me get a cover, then I'm gonna tidy up and we'll be right back. This is smelling amazing. So welcome to my cooking channel. If you're new, uh, if you're loving what's going on, give me a little thumbs up. I, I love taking time to do these videos for you to inspire some creativity and just easy cooking in the kitchen. We're layering these. So we've got the onion, the garlic. Uh, I've chopped up some shiitake mushroom. I put the cover on just for a little bit to uh, to let the steam. And I'm adding the sweet potatoes now to soften those because they're so thin. I added those later. We're cutting up the, uh, the pear. Make your life easy, just like with the apples. Just cut around the core. That way you have a core to snack on or to give to one of your kids. They can just chew around it. I'm going to do that later. <laughs> and then just flap these all over on the, on the, on the uh, flat side. When you're cutting, cut on the flat side of everything so they don't move. And just cut them into equal kind of uh, shapes here. I just line them all up. And then I just cut through them all. So that saves you a lot of time and you can keep things pretty even, all right? Nice and easy. We've got a bowl of pears. We're not gonna add that yet. What we are gonna add are the um, spices. I have some fresh sage. When I do have fresh sage, I like to use fresh sage. So <clears throat> let's just get a few of these. That'll probably be enough. It's very fragrant. Sage is perfect to add with poultry. I'm not going to add thyme into this one. Uh, oh, yeah. I like to use the, the uh, chef knife a little bit thicker, uh, sturdier blade for this. 
So ribbon cut, make it as small as you want or as rough and cut as you want. Right? Just want to cut into it, get the fragrance going. I don't have rosemary, so I'm using <clears throat> chopped rosemary. Actually, when you get rosemary, oftentimes it's um, the little spiny things. So I actually took all of it and I put it into my coffee grinder and I made it really fine. Um, now I can use it and it's not gonna be offensive to the palate. Fabulous. So um, I'm just gonna put a little bit of salt. And then flavor, not too much. You can always salt things. You can't take the salt out. We'll put more on top when we cook it as well. All right, I'm gonna put the cover back on and just let this sit for a little bit longer. The quinoa is almost done. Then we're gonna add the pears and the quinoa and uh, I'll add the parsley and some of the green onions at the very last moment so they're not overcooked. So you've seen me with the parsley or your cilantro, keep it in a jar in the refrigerator just like this. It'll make it easy for you to see it, to get creative. It won't get mushy, it won't get all soggy and start to oxidize and <clears throat> it'll be much easier for you just to grab some out, cut through it, chop it up <clears throat> and I just love this fresh smell. We're gonna save a little bit for the topping, okay? Get these little bowls. You can get them on, Am on Amazon, they're Winco. I think this is the smallest one, which is about seven something. All right, so I'm gonna use some green onions as well. I also had them in a jar. And the refrigerator, the refrigerator looks so healthy <laughs> and alive. You don't have to put green onions in. I'm adding them actually uh, at the very end, and I'll save some for topping. But I like them fresh, like in my, uh, like in my fresh uh, vegan tuna fish wraps. <clears throat> There's also a video for that you can catch. All right, so this is steaming really nice, getting super fragrant. What are we gonna add now? Now we're gonna add, uh, now we're gonna add the uh, pears. I'm gonna add some of the cranberries, you know, just to toss them in there with everything. Probably about a quarter cup of cranberries, at least a half a cup of the pears. Kind of go with it. I'm just making, um, I'm actually kind of making half the recipe. We we'll use some of that. We we'll use some of these and saving some for the top. So now we just wanna toss this all around in these beautiful, fragrant spices that kind of remind you of stuffing <laughs> at the holidays. So there's no way that this will not be well received. Look how beautiful this is, guys. So fantastic. We don't need to overcook this. So it's gonna put the cover back on for a little bit. I, I like using the cover because it cooks slow, but the, uh, the steam helps to soften everything. So we'll be back with the quinoa and the little baby black um, lentil sprouts are finished. We're going to add those to them, then stuff it, put it back in the oven, and it's done. Okay, it's perfect. So we're going to add a little bit more broth. Very fragrant. And I'm going to stick this down. We're going to add the quinoa. This is Fluffy and amazing. <laughs> Look how fluffy this is. It's not balls of quinoa. The first time I had quinoa, it was so gross. That's why I I learned to make my own veggie quinoa. <laughs> the coconut oil helps to give it even more satisfaction. Your body just loves it up. Okay, so we're just tossing this together into a filling, you might have too much. So now you're gonna have a great side for another meal, or you could put this on top of greens uh, and meal prep it. Always have glass containers on hand with covers so you can bring them with you during the day and get filled up on, look how amazing this is. It's honestly guys, it smells freaking incredible. 
I love the idea of using pears. Pears are really amazing. Uh, fruit of the lung season, which is fall, which we're going to be there at the end of September. And so this is pretty much done. We're just going to turn this down. And we're just going to wait. <laughs> Some he want me. We're gonna wait until the uh, squash is tender and we're gonna stuff it. Then we're gonna put them back in there and just let it finish up. That's how easy this recipe is and it's gonna be to die for. Hey guys, so the squash is ready. Um, now this is what happens when you add the parchment paper to the top, it creates a little bit of steam. So it helps to cook it more nicely without it getting burnt and dried out. So you take it out and you test it. You just want it to be fork tender all the way around. This is perfect. And we're gonna stuff this now, put it back in, not covered, and just cook it for another like 20 minutes. We're gonna reduce the temperature down to 375 and we're gonna fill this up. So, Actually, using a little uh, half cup measure <clears throat> is a great way to get this in. Now, look at what we have. We have a lot left. So this makes a beautiful something that you can add as a side to chicken strips, uh, which I actually have in the freezer because I've already pounded out some chicken breast. So great ways that you can do meal prep just from one recipe. Right, so we're gonna stuff this in there real nice. It's okay if we have a little falling. <clears throat> Just put a little tiny bit over the top. We'll dress it with some more after. Just gives it a little bit of color and daintiness. So we're gonna put this back in, then I'm gonna reduce the temperature down to 375 and set the timer for 20 minutes and it is done. So big, done, easy peasy. All right, so perfect. Now we have this and this is why I have many glass containers around. And when I meal prep for clients, I have them get a variety, the 22 ounce, the 30 ounce, the 36 ounce with the separation. You get a good quality glass that you can put into a little um, countertop oven at work or at home if you're at home and it's perfect. So we're just gonna get some in here and I might uh, put the rest in the refrigerator. Oh no, it'll all fit. They're perfect. So now look at all this. Now I have from one recipe I've prepped and I've got stuff available. Let's top this before we put it in. It's great. So we'll add this to the refrigerator and we'll be right back to wrap this up and see how it all came out. Okay, you ready for the grand finale? Now, if you know me, you've been watching me, I cleaned up everything while everything was finishing. So that makes your life a lot easier. There's nothing to look at while you're trying to enjoy a meal. Look how awesome these look. Woohoo! So I have this uh, special little plate. It was made by a local uh, artist. How gorgeous is that, right? So we are gonna take one of these babies. So if you're doing, um, any grass-fed butter, what you can do is um, you can melt some and drizzle it over the top while it's baking. Just gives it a little extra savory flavor unless you're staying away from uh, butter altogether. So then what I would do is just freshen up the herbs a tiny bit here. Um, make it look amazing. Put a little fresh, I love this pepper grinder. It allows you to alternate the size of the grind. So you might want something a little bit bigger when you're displaying all done. So <laughs> if you'd like more information on the cookbook, um, that's gonna be in the information down below. I'm born the same day as Julia Child, but I love to inspire more fearless 
creativity in the kitchen. So if you do want to change something, that's why I did this today, because sometimes you might not have everything in the recipe and get nervous and look at what we did. It's just fantastic. So thanks for joining me here today. If you love these videos, you can sign up. So you get a little ding notice when something new is up and you can share with other people that you think would love it too. Have an awesome day right here from KK's Big Kitchen.